we're going to start this morning's meeting. We're going to have the invocation by Captain Rebecca Brown with the Clayton County Police Department It'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand. Good morning, Father. God, we thank you for your presence in this room today. Thank you for being with our chairman and our commissioners in our um, county. We thank you, God, for creativity, for ideas and inventions. We thank you, God, for bestowing favor upon this county. In Jesus' name we pray. I mean, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. This is your July 30th, 2015. This is a special call meeting and public hearing to adopt the FYE 2016 millage rate. May we have a motion by the board to adopt this morning's <coughs> agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I'm probably moving to second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, it's unanimous. Thank you. We will have a public hearing. The Board of Commissioners is conducting this public hearing to provide for citizen input pertaining to the county's proposed fiscal year ending 2016 millage rate increase. Ramona Bevins, Chief Financial Officer, will present the county's fiscal year ending 2016 proposed mill rates. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. As the clerk stated, the, pu the purpose of this meeting is to hold a public hearing on the proposed millage rate because it is considered a property tax increase. This is the third of the final of three hearings. <coughs> We're having some technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> So we're required to set a millage rate um, to support the maintenance and operations of the county. This is um, per OCGA 48-5-32.1. We're required to advertise the current year digest and five-year history, which we have done. We've also made copies available for the public in the back. And again, hold three public hearings if the millage rate is set above the rollback rate. And again, this is the third. The process began back in the, the first of the year when the tax assessor assessed all the properties in the county, the assessment notices were mailed out to the um, business o property owners rather on April 24th. The deadline to appeal your assessed value was June the 8th and we received the lockdown digest on June 19th. And based on that final digest, our net property values were up about 5%, right at 4.6%. Based on that digest, this is the estimated tax revenues for 2015, which supports the FY 2016 budget. <coughs> the net assessed value was at $6.2 billion, which is up $272 million from last year. The base millage rate remains the same at 20.953. However, the sales tax credit decreased um, from last year to 5.091, resulting in a net millage rate of 15.862. That will um, result in a gross property tax level of, of 90, levy of $97.8 million. And we use a 97% collection rate, so we should collect around $93 million in um, property tax revenue this year. So the proposed 2015 millage rate for incorporated Clayton County would be 15.862. Unincorporated Clayton County would be 20.862, which includes the five mills for the fire fund millage. The state millage rate decreased this year from 0 .100 to 0 .050, and the Board of Education has approved the board of the school's millage rate at 19.804. This is the 2015 digest and five-year history that was published in the paper, and again, it's been made available to everyone here today. And these figures are shown in thousands. And from 2010 to now, you can see the the down the decreases and increases in the property values. 2010, we were at 7.4 billion. In 2011, it decreased. You saw another decrease in 12 and 13. And then last year, we saw a slight increase. And the corresponding taxes levied, you can see at the bottom how our ta taxes decreased, except for 2010 to 2011, when at that time, the board increased the 
gross millage rate to, 20, to the current 20.953, which it, has, it remains the same, and the only time the net millage rate changes is based on the sales tax credit. So this year is the first year we've seen a significant um, increase that's getting close to back to where we were in 2010. This th is the same information for the fire fund, um, and it, it shows the same information, the same trends. And last year, we did increase the fire fund to the four or five mills because the general fund has been having to support that fund for the last two years. So we were able to increase that, and this year, we would, should get about $18.5 million actual revenue that we collect. So combined, the, um, the total digest for both fire and the um, county is at $10 billion, and that will generate levy, taxes levied of $117 million, which is an increase of $11 million and a 10.4% overall increase in both fire and m and this slide just shows a comparison of Clayton County's millage rate as compared to other counties in the metro Atlanta area. Um, we have DeKalb, Henry Cobb, and Gwinnett's information. We weren't able to get comparable information from the Fulton County Digest. But um, as you see, Clayton County kind of falls in the middle, I believe, of all of the counties for their net county millage rate. And um, I also showed at the bottom of the slide what <coughs> one mill generates in each county based on the amount of revenue that's generated as well as the property values. So for Clayton County, one mill generates $6.2 million, while one mill generates 5.2 in Henry, but in DeKalb, Cobb, and Gwinnett, it generates over $20 million. So how does this affect the homeowner? This slide shows the estimated taxes on a home that experienced an increase in fair market value um, for the first time, the tax assessor did a um, study, did the sales uh, sales study in comparability, and that's one of the reasons why we have an increase in the pro in the assessed values. So um, this will show what it was if from last year, if your home was at seventy one thousand seven twenty four, which was the actual average sales price for last year, and this year the average sales price through May was one hundred and five thousand dollars. And it shows that this particular individual would pay a, an additional $233 in property taxes. And that increase is contributed to both the increase in the fair market value of the home as well as a decrease in the local option sales tax. And that was for incorporated. The next one is for unincorporated. This includes the fire fund millage. This particular individual whose home increased in value would experience an additional um, $300 increase in their property values. And again, this is in, uh, due to the increase in the value of their home as well as the decrease in the loss credit. The next two slides I'm gonna show for unincorporated and unincorporated with the home <coughs> whose fair market value did not change. It remained the same from last year to this year. And we used $150,000 as an example, as the amount. And this shows that they would have an additional $50 due to the lost credit only because there was no increase in their value of their home, so their, their M&O taxes would not have increased, only except for the, and neither would it have for the fire millage rate, just the difference in the lost. In unincorporated, the amount would be the same even though the five um, mills is included in there for the fire millage. Again, this is the last of our um, public hearings, and immediately following the public hearing, we will request that the board adopt the proposed millage rates as presented. And Mr. Chairman, that concludes the presentation. I will turn the floor back over to you for public comments. All right, again, thank you for the work that you and your staff put into <laughs> preparing this millage rate uh, presentation. <laughs> Are there any questions for Ms. Bivens by any of the board members? I have a question. Ms. Bivens. So Ms. Bivens, as I put all of that into the pot and cook it down from my, my head, I just want to make sure I understand. So the county is, what we're doing, what we're considering is considered a tax increase because we're collecting more year over year, but we're not actually raising the millage rate. Is that right? 
Correct. Um, the base millage rate remains the same. Okay. And when we um, get the loss credit, that gives us the millage rate of the 15, uh, where did it go? I was looking at another sheet. Oh, the wrong one. 15.862, I was looking at the five minutes. Got it. And, and, and that is considered because there's um, something called the rollback millage rate. Right. And that takes into account the increase in property values. And there's a calculation that tells you the rollback rate, which, which millage rate should be set to be revenue neutral. In other words, it would generate the same amount of revenue as it did the prior year. And any time we set the millage rate above that, it's considered a property tax increase. Okay, so as of this year, what's considering us that this Board of Commissioners is what's before us for consideration is not a millage rate, not a property tax rate increase. Right, the base millage rate remains the same. And this is the same tax rate that we've had for the last five years in a row? That is correct. The base millage rate was increased, I believe, in 2011. Right. So we haven't raised the tax rate in five years. No, sir. The only thing that changes the property tax is the loss credit. No further questions. Any other questions? Where are right. the resolutions? Where are the resolutions for us to consider? Do you not have them? Commissioner Rooks, I just received these resolutions. Do you want to table this till next month because we hadn't had a chance to read it? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, why? Do you have copies for the board members? I do not. I just received them one minute before the meeting started. All right, while we're waiting on the copies of, for the board members, are there any citizens that would like to have input on this millage increase? All right, one at a time, would you please come take the podium, please? Oh, I'm willing, please. Please, not do the property tax. It's not a property tax increase. Would you restate what you said? It's not a millage increase, it's a what? The base millage rate has not increased. It's the same as it was when it was increased back in 2011, I believe. Okay. You just said no. Okay. And even though we're still collecting less than we did in 2010, it's considered a tax increase because we're collecting more year over year from last year, even though we did not raise taxes. Yes, ma'am, if you would state your name. My name is Annette Rosinski and I've been a Clayton County resident for over 20 years. I'm a little confused. I hear something about the sales tax. You're not collecting the same amount of sales tax. Am I to understand my property taxes are just going up because my house is valued higher? That is correct. So where does the sales tax come in? The loss of revenue that we are not collecting in sales retail tax. Uh, such as businesses moving out of the county and so okay. forth. Had we collected more, you would have gotten a credit. There it is. And then your taxes would have gone down. So the more retail we have in the county, the more credit we can give people, then your taxes are low, even if your property values are higher. Okay, so is there anybody doing anything pertaining to Lowell's Toys R Us, Target, JCPenney, Lazy Board, Rooms to Go, Hobby Lobby, I can go on and on. We've lost Leaving a lot. Clayton County to go to Fayette and to go to Henry County. Yes. And once I'm in Fayette shopping at the pavilion with the other numerous cars from Clayton County, I'm not only shopping there for my groceries, it's, hey, we're in Fayette County. Let's get lunch here. Well, I take I my vehicle to Fayette County. I save $58.19 a year just on food shopping in another county. Ma'am, to answer that question, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a broader concept of government versus the private sector, and this isn't meant to sound like an excuse, but from a, from a practical standpoint, it's not the government's place, responsibility, nor would you want us to even have the power to dictate what businesses can go where and, 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 and collect what taxes. We can't stop them from building or moving or opening or closing. We'd like them to stay. We'd like you to shop here and not there, but it's their privilege and right to go wherever they want to. So to how are we addressing this? We're working on marketing, but five, six years ago, we had an economic development department of one person. 
That's what this board inherited. And in the last five or six years, of course, it's been the worst recession in a, in a century, but um, we have increased that economic development department from one person to six plus people with, with hopes and plans to continue to expand it. So we've got as much effort as we can, as aggressively as we can afford, to get out there and recruit new businesses to help rec retain those existing ones that we have. But at the end of the day, businesses are driven by profit and, and, and it's a vicious cycle, but if you shop and eat in Henry County or in Fayette County, then you're helping shoot us in the foot because that's where they go and that's where they stay. If you want to help us, help you, help the community, go out of your way to shop here, not there. I understand that, but I cannot find my clothes at Family Dollar. <laughs> you know, that's We've got them all, that's and in that mall is a Macy's and other things. They do I not have size 2 petite. If well, I could find my clothing here, I would shop here. I cannot find the clothing that fits me. Ma'am, we understand that, and we are aggressively going after new businesses to, for, come, to come to Clayton County. We have a new economic uh, d uh, development director, and he is aggressive. He's on the job, and he's talking to a lot of people and working with the city of Mara also to try to bring new businesses. But again, we have to be supportive of those businesses in our county. And it's not to chastise you, I'm just making an observation and the fact that the more we shop here, the more sales tax revenue we collect, which will make have a direct impact on your property tax. Like you said, it's a vicious cycle. It if is. I had the availability of things I need, right. we'd shop here. I agree. Let me just piggyback on that. Um, our former Economic Development Director uh, Grant Wayne Scott would always say to us, and he said to the community often, that when you are shopping out of the county, they can track your zip code, they know where you are, and they can say, if you want these services, you're going to drive for it. So if you can drive for it from an economic perspective for businesses, they'd rather shut down that business and have you drive. So I am on the south end of Clayton County, so the target for a number of, of my constituents is Fayette County. So there is quicker, it's more convenient than, than the one that was on Mount Zion, but they track that, unfortunately. And I think we just paid the price for that. But a number of the businesses that you did mention is in the city of Morrow, so it will take a collective um, joint effort between the county and the city and the city's willingness to, uh, to hear our assistance in that. So, that, and that's another. When, when Penny's was at the mall, I was there. I was there on a weekly basis. When Target was here, I was Me there. Me too. When Kmart was here, I was there. Well, and we I have new. And Kmart is, you know, a little bit different, but they're still in Peachtree City, so they didn't close down completely. Right. Well, that we have new owners at the mall, and they are investing a lot of money in trying to bring back those businesses. Yes. So they are working hard to bring some more businesses. All so right. just so. stay with us, stay All strong, right. and then when you can shop in Clayton County, please do so. Thank well, you. I'm sure Fayette and Henry is real appreciative. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Ms. Granger. The commissioners tell me that. The commissioners from Henry County tell me. Thank you. Good evening. Good morning. I'm well, St good state, morning. State your name, please. <laughs> uh, Linda Granger. I'm coming because I'm very uh, disappointed with Clay County. Well, I'm going to give you all Clay County because I'm asking you all to govern according, be good students. Okay, like I said, when I come here, I'm very upset with different things. I hear what you all just said to that lady. I sent an email to each one of you all how I would do with trying to do business in Clay County stores. So government court and Tepel get hit on every end. Okay, go and talk to a lot of elders that cannot come here and see how many flow clothes we have and tax increase and stuff. When you do go in Fayetteville to those stores and complain about they people that doing business in their county, it's something being done. When you call in Clay County, it like put a tooth for a snake trying to get things done in Clay County. Okay, why I ask about trash. Okay, we got all these people, we had to pay. Why we can't get that put into our sewer? We just had a budget paid. I asked to look at the budget. Open government is transparent. Come on, let be that, all of you boys. It's time for election again. You all go hear me. 
you go deaf and hear me, cause I'm tired of Clay County and these leaders not doing what they supposed to do. And when I call, yes, I look for you all to call. And don't tell me you can't give me your phone number. It's we paying for your phone. Don't tell me that. Who said? I want your phone number. They tell me. I, mean, I Ranger, call here. Calm down just a little I'm bit. I'm very first. upset. I understand that, but calm down a little I'm bit. I'm very please. upset. And if you all pay this, it need to be a total investigation done. It need to be done. And come in and check all aspects. I am tired of Clay County. Everything that you do in Clay County, you can't get no help. And like that man lied to you all about it. I didn't have the money to pay. And that store could taller than me could get in. And y'all said, do business in Clay County. Keep the money in Clay County. Yes, I shot in Fayetteville too. Thank you. About keeping somebody from it. Uh, yes, ma'am. Please state your name and county of residence, please. Good morning. My name is Karen Wiggy. We got back this morning. All right. I would like to speak with you this morning also. According to the Bible and the words of our Lord Jesus, he said the Lord wants us to be good stewards of the money, and he will bless us. Okay, what is happening here in Clayton County? I moved here in 1982. It was the most beautiful place to live. In my neighborhood, there were people that worked at Delta. There was attorneys, and slowly I have seen it decline, 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 decline. Homes in my area are boarded up. There's drug school activity going on in my area, but I won't call because I'm afraid if they find out that I told, I'll get, be the one to get shot. Now, if we wanted to put our home on the market for sale, it's not worth anything. And I've heard over and over people say they don't want to live in Clayton County because your house is not worth nothing but you raise the taxes. And what incentive do we have here? People go shopping elsewhere. You have to, if you're a senior citizen, on a fixed income, you get so much money per month. You've got to stretch that money to make all your insurances, your car insurance, your home insurance, your house taxes, on and on it goes, plus your utilities. And I just can't understand what this is all coming to. We're having a decline in Clayton County. Can't sell our homes. The homes are boarded up. And also, I, I just feel really bad because we did have it so nice. We had goodies, we had lecterns, we had pennies, we had all this. And I have a friend that worked with my husband at Lowe's. He was a former, he was an assistant manager at the Publix in Jonesboro. And he said that he left because of the high taxes. You can't, the people around here can't rent a building because it's too expensive. And he left for the simple reason of so much thievery and robbery. And so, to me, I see us on a big decline, and I just ask the Lord to bless us and that things change and get turned around for the better. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Benoit. Good evening, board. Jeffrey Benoit, Clayton County resident since 1993. And like our previous speakers, I'm a bit disturbed as well. When things are going well, you have the right to acclaim the successes and make that a part of your resume. But when things are going bad, you have to accept that as well and make that part of your resume. Clayton County is suffering greatly. We have seen some bad government. We have seen a lot of loss in Clayton County. When you see a baby store, Babies are us. Leave the county, that speaks volumes. Truly, we want to take care of our children, but we got to go to another county just to get the things for our children. Who does that? I say that to say this. We are talking about our property values. That's called an assessment. But the actual value comes in an appraisal. I have an appraisal and my appraisal did not meet my assessed value. I took it to the Board of Equalization, Mr. Frank Bailey, and I challenged that as I could as a taxpayer, and he uphold that value even though my appraisal showed totally contradictory. 
and I am upset with this, and I am sick and tired of the fact that you can consistently need more and more revenue to run this county, which I do understand, but yet you want it on the backs of tax-paying citizens who still own property in this county. That's becoming a very slim line. People have moved out, people have lost their homes, and now they're owned by renters. In my subdivision, I got more renters than anything else and they move out each every, every six to 12 months. There's garbage sitting in a, pop, in a home right now where they've been evicted. Now I gotta sit and look at that for a while until the county comes and picks it up, because you know that renter's not coming back and pick it up. So this is what we are facing. And I simply say to you that this meeting was unsubstantiated. These seats should be filled with property owners and citizens who are going to be paying these taxes that we're gonna vote on. But yet by virtue of the time that it was offered, they're at work, and we know that. Why are we not doing this at a time that's more conducive for them to come and tell you, the Board of Commissioners, I am not in agreement with what's going on, and we need to come up with a better idea. I understand that we need the tax revenue. We've lost our, get our fuel taxes from Delta. We've also lost businesses that do business at the airport by virtue of them going through Atlanta to get their business license and paying taxes to the city of Atlanta as opposed to Clayton County when the Hartsfield exact, exact Hartsville Jackson is in Clayton County. This is where our board of officials, our elected officials, should be fighting that issue down at the state capitol, but they're not doing that as well. So this is where all our tax dollars are going to. So before you raise taxes on the backs of these individuals, let's push back at the uh, state capitol and our elected officials who are sent down there to quit making buddy-buddy deals to sell Clayton County out. We are on the verge of a massive gentrification. They didn't build Porsche here because me and you are going to buy one. But Excuse rest me. assured, they do intend to sell them. But they're going to sell them to those who can afford them. But Excuse they got to get Clayton County packed before they can do that. And that's coming. So Mr. as, we, I got, as we see that, we're going to have to do better. But before we raise taxes, let's raise our image. Let's raise our expectancy of what Clayton County can do, will do, and where, what we're doing. All right. Three Thank you, Mr. Time. Benoit. Inspire. Okay. Next. Anyone else? Okay. I had a question, Ms. Thurman. If this doesn't pass, then what happens? Um, Mr. Baskins would not be able to submit our tax digest. Did you just see his head explode when he oh, asked that question? Is he back there? Mr. Baskins. Would you <laughs> We cut services. We amend the budget to cut services. I believe we would have to go back to last year's budget. Is that correct? Okay. We would have to cut services because we would. He would not be able to send our tax bills. We would have to operate off of our fund balance as long as we could until we did get a millage rating um, approved and certified by the state. And uh, as he said last year. There are some deadlines that we have to meet before some penalties are assessed, and we would lose about 50% of our tax revenue once it is set. He could better explain to you those exact deadlines. Mr. Baskin, please come forward. Yeah, and before Mr. Baskin comes forward, and I go back again to the percentages that the cities received and took that away from the unincorporated Clayton County. Now we can see what a difference that has made. And I, Okay. Well, let me let me under, let me just state for the record my understanding coming here before there was litigation between the cities and the county. That's before I was on this board. The Gwinnett County had just lost their lo the lawsuit to the cities, so they were paying more than they negotiated in paying. So Clayton County, yes, we had to give the cities their portion, but we were legally obligated to do it. Had we gone to the to the litigation, we would have been paying 20, we would have been paying 10% more than we negotiated in paying. So we would have been in a more precarious situation. So I know the rhetoric, I read the law, I knew the law, we were in litigation, we had been sued, had we lost, which we were going to, because Gwinnett had just lost, we would have had 10% more to pay to the cities. So in good faith, we settled and negotiated that and that's those are the facts and, and those are, that is documented and now we're paying for it now we're paying for it my thing is we should have fought for our citizens thank you we should have fought for our citizens. we would have we lost don't know, we don't know that we would have lost yes we would have okay. all, right. all right let's ask we don't order. know that but we are paying for it now so. we would have lost and we would have right. paid greatly more than we are now 
Those are the facts. All right. Thank Don't you. listen to me. Go pull the lawsuit. Mr. Chairman, um, yes. the decrease in the lost revenue from the ne negotiations is about $3 million a year. Last, the difference from 2013 calendar year collections and 2014 calendar year collections, which is what we're using to calculate the lost credit for this year, is about $7 million. So $3 million that we can account and attribute to that particular agreement. The other $4 million is, is I, in my opinion, is due to businesses leaving or people not shopping in the county. Those are the only two things that will affect sales tax other than, than that. So it's the total collections all together. People and didn't also just. also from the for fiscal year, by finish. fiscal year, we've actually increased for fiscal year, but this calculation is not done on a fiscal year, it's done on the calendar year. Right. And one thing that we can look forward to, ho hopefully, because of the new transportation bill, we are now able to um, tax the fuel at the airport. I think one of the constituents made a comment about us not being able to tax the fuel at Delta anymore. That is no longer a case. And also, um, being the tax on the um, motor vehicle fuel. So let me let me say this. That Pe should increase the the for next year. Hopefully, the loss credit will increase and will decrease the the net millage rate. Okay, we're attributing a lot of this to people going out of the county. People have been doing that for a long time. They didn't just start going out of Clayton County this year or last year. That has been happening. So. Well, no, ma'am, no, I didn't say all of it was today. It's businesses leaving as well. It, it's a combination of the two. But I know three million of that seven, I can say, based on, based on the calculations that we did when this first happened, we did a projection on how it would affect our tax revenue, and it was estimated about $3 million. So anything over that has to be contributed to one of those two variables. It's not just due to the IGA. That's, that's what I was saying. I would like to make my comment. I was going to wait until we got a motion on the floor. But, you know, Ms. Thurman, you know, you, everybody can be as charismatic as possible and explain it. Well, this is not really a tax increase. This is not really a, you know, a village increase or whatever. Bottom line, you're going to, people are going to pay more money. And, and that's it. Bottom line, people are going to pay, the, the homeowners in this county are going to be paying more money. Um, when they get their tax bills, you know, by November 15th, they're going to be paying more money. And we cannot just sit here and try to, you know, sweep, sweep it over. Let me go back also to you, you, the, uh, when you talk about the fund balance. I, you know, I have to keep re thinking about just bad decisions that are made where we've decreased that fund balance by nearly $20 million in two and a half years. And don't let me, I'm going to mention it every time I get a chance, this audit that cost about a million dollars, waste of taxpayer money. When I came back from the boot camp this morning just riding down, and I'm looking like, oh, this trash, this is just dirty. And until we do something about this infrastructure of this county, people are not going to shop here, and people are not going to want to move here As until we do something. When we keep wasting money like this, it's just wasteful. Those are my comments. I have a question. Um, Commissioners, Commissioner. Um, I, I, like I said, I made a statement. I, I'm not up for any discussion today. <laughs> if that was for me. <laughs> well, my, my question is, if this increase as estimated, even though we're not changing the millage rate, year over year is to go from 85 million in taxes received in 85 uh, in, in last year, and to an estimated 93 million for this coming fiscal year. And even though that's less than what we collected in 2010, all of this rhetoric is about that $8 million increase year over year. So if you're opposed or concerned with that, what is your alternative? Are you proposing that we cut the budget by $8 million in order to have a lower millage rate? Michael, for, and if so, where just, do you want to cut the $8 million Just from? as we did, you know, in the past years, we made some tough decisions, cut where we had to cut, and while we were in the worst economic downturn that the county has seen in, in years or the country itself, there were some tough decisions made and there was not irresponsible spending going on. And that's my answer to my question. Yes, right, Mr. Daskin, that's what I said. All right, let's hear from <laughs> Mr. Baskin. Sir, uh, I guess the question that was from the commission was basically what will happen if the millage rate does not pass today? And at this very moment, we've already had an extension by the Department of Revenue from state uh, dated to sep September 1st. That's the extension. But if you don't accept the military today, 
we have to start this whole cycle all over again, which would put us beyond that September 1st due date. So right now, I've already have a uh, scheduled appointment with the Department of Revenue on August 10th at 11 o'clock to submit the digest. So what I'm talking about is this. If it's not accepted today, we have to start the whole cycle all over again. That means we go beyond that due date. That means that there are penalties incurred because we are in extension. See, the digest is already set to be submitted August 3rd. And we're getting that extension to the 10th. If it goes beyond that, yes, we're in jeopardy of penalties. Any questions for Mr. Baskin? Do we also lose eligibility for certain state and federal grants? That, I don't know. I can't give that answer. Uh, okay. But let me interject one thing, because in the month of May, we were already put on notice. The state, of, uh, the state Department of Revenue have already coded certain counties, white, gray, and red. Red means the extreme, gray means you're right in between, and the white, you're okay. And it dealt with valuation. It could be dealing with whatever uh, various issues that the Department of Revenue deemed uh, in jeopardy of. Clayton was notified as of that day in May that we were in the gray area. This digest is, is, is very important that it is submitted in a timely manner, concise, complete, and we're ready to rock and roll. Mr. Uh, McDa uh, McDaniel and his team has done a magnificent job in getting the assessments set out, the appeals down, and doing what they need to do to get us out of the gray area so we can go back into the white. So for this board to say to themselves, well, I'm not sure what we should do if we need to go ahead and table this for right now. It's putting us in perilous times. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Baskin. You're welcome. Not for Mr. Baskin. I have a question for Ms. Thurman. Bevins. I'm sorry, Ms. Bevins. I apologize. <laughs> to keep the property taxes from increasing, you have to reduce the mill. We would have to reduce the gross meal, yes, ma'am. And then next year, the, um, if the property values were to decrease, we would have to go back and increase the gross millage rate. To, and then that would definitely be an increase in the meal. Mm -hmm. All right, any other and we've not, I'm sorry, we haven't increased a meal in how long? The last time the gross millage rate was increased was in 2011. It was increased from 16.453 to 20.953. And at that time, that was considered, um, because the fire mills rate wasn't changed, a 20.59% increase in 2011. And that's listed on the five-year history. That um, was posted, and that's in the back as well. I think I had given each one of you one of these at the last meeting. Okay. Any other questions? All right, Ms. Miller, are you gonna present these uh, resolutions? Good morning. For the board's consideration, we have two resolutions to adopt. Resolution 2015-206, the resolution to adopt the county's millage rate to establish the rate after rollbacks for fiscal year 2015 and 2016 to authorize the levy and collection of property taxes at such rate to cover expenditures associated with the maintenance and operation of the county and activities necessary and incidental thereto to cover expenditures associated with the provision of fire service and to authorize the mill rate credit equal to taxes collected from the 1% local option sales tax and to authorize the chairman to execute the certification of official rates together with any other documents pertaining to such mill rates and to provide for effective date of this resolution. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Properly moved and second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Three, two. Hambrick and Gregory opposed. Proceed with the next, please. The next resolution is 2015-207, a resolution to acknowledge receipt of the permanent and final net mill rate for values <coughs> added by reassessment for 2015-2016, adopted by the Clayton County School District 
to provide for the proposed levy and collection of property taxes at such certified rate for the support and maintenance of public schools, public education, and activities necessary and incidental thereto, <coughs> and to provide for an effective date of this resolution and other purposes. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Property moved and second in questions. Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. All right, there's no other business, so entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Proud to move and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Have a good day. Aye.